Hi everybody and welcome back to the fairy tale family where our goal is to put a little bit of magic into your everyday. I'm Chelsea and today we are focusing really on how we put that little spark of magic into our everyday. This was not necessarily a planned video. Um, we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about how to preserve your Disney memories and build a little bit of that Disney magic or Disney spirit into your lives, into your regular day. And I feel like, and this may be dramatic, but I feel like there has never been a better time to infuse the magic of Disney than now, than us being in this state of the world where we're in quarantine and in these stay at home orders. And while the majority of the country is starting the recovery process, we know it's not going to be immediate. So if you had a trip that was canceled or you have an upcoming trip, or you just wanna recall the magical moments that you spent in the parks, I'm hoping that today's tips can help you. So as the fairy tale family, you know, one of our mottos is about making magic happen on a daily basis. And we do that in many ways as a family, but when we're focused on Disney, there are kind of like our go-to ways. And I wanted to share those with you today, as well as talk about how to preserve the memories that you've made in the parks. You've spent all this money and all this time planning, and then you come home and you don't want those memories to kind of like wash away on the plane ride home. So let's get started with, I have 10 tips and two bonus tips for you. Okay, we wanted to make some of these things that you didn't have to purchase per se, um, but just a fair warning, a lot of these are like product recommendations almost for how to bring Disney into your home, into your day-to-day -day life. Um, I also, by the time this comes out, will have put out a Mother's Day gift guide for the Disney loving mama. And so there's like some crossover here as well, just so that we're gonna get started. Okay, I think probably we're gonna start with the one that's the most obvious, but my guess is if you didn't do Disney's photo pass while you were in the parks, you yourself took a ton of photos. Now, I fall victim to this too, where I just leave the photos on my phone that's a problem. So I have a couple of solutions. Um, if you have had like a Disney photo shoot and there are some really gorgeous photos, you can turn those into art for your everyday walls at home. One of the things that we were lucky enough to do is my, I'm going to call her my mother-in-law. She's not my mother-in-law. She is my sister's mother-in-law, but she is a really talented scrapbooker. So when we took our trip in February of 2017, um, she started a Disney scrapbook for us. And really it's intended to be for every single trip, um, but we're in a line, you know, because she does one for my sister and she'll probably do one for my sister-in-law. So for example, these, this is like from Callie's first haircut and her little like hair that Disney gives you is in here. So these are some of our favorite photos from the Polynesian. Um, this was a really special night, but we build scrapbooks. This one's called Once Upon a Time. We use our photos as our screensavers on our computer, our watch faces, um, our phone backgrounds. Like we try to build those photos into our everyday. And of course, if you follow us on Instagram, you are seeing our circulated photos from Disney all the time. I try to do at least a couple of week. Uh, we are at the fairy tale family. So we're using our photos to our advantage and making sure that they don't just live on the back burner. One of the best ways that I have found to do that is through the subscription service Naveo. This is not an ad for Naveo. You do know, based on a couple of videos and a bunch of Instagram stories, that I'm an affiliate for Naveo, but what Naveo does is they take the photos that you have on your phone, allow you to compile them into a month at a time, and then you can create like these paper scrapbooks of those photos. So for example, like this is the one, the most recent one from March 
uh, which is last month at this point. Um, and I'm working on the April one now. So this at the end of the month automatically gets sent to whomever you have a subscription for. So we have two, we have one for my parents. So they automatically get a copy and they, I have one for me. If you want more information, I do have a discount code for you. It'll be in the description box, but having this like stack, let me show you this stack of paper memories that we can come back to um, is really important for us because then our photos are like preserved here as well as digitally. Um, an app that I use, you know, we love to re-evaluate our photos from years past. So I do store all of my photos also in Google Photos. And then when I click into the Google Photos app, it allows me to see like one, two, three, four years back. And then we'll sometimes put together montages. I also love to use like the Facebook memories, Instagram memories, like, you know, using apps, how they were intended to be used and to preserve your memories. So photos in some form, I think that's probably the biggest preservation uh, that most people would do. This is, this is one of my favorites. You can only see the, there we go. Okay. So this is a shadow box. Sorry. I'm trying really hard not to show you the reflection of my neighbor's house. This is a shadow box that has three sets of Disney ears in them. Callie's is on top, mom, me in the middle and Mark dad at the bottom. When we took our baby moon to Disney World. We had these hats engraved because it's where we chose Callie's name. Um, we were actually in Epcot at a space that no longer exists. We were sitting outside of Starbucks and we just decided on her name. We called our parents. It was a very exciting and nostalgic day for us. But when we get new ears, like from the park, we tend to, um, we are starting a collection for Cali, but we then frame them in some capacity and then they're currently like going diagonally down our stairs. Um, in my vanity, which I'll insert a clip of here, I keep my ears on display so that I can grab them and wear them for whatever reason. And particularly in quarantine, I've been reaching for my ears a lot because they make me happy. So preserving our memories through physically, like the preservation of keeping them safe and secure or having them as an everyday focal point. I sit in front of that mirror and do my makeup, I do my hair, I take my makeup off at the end of the day, I do my skincare. I see those ears multiple times a day. I even leave like my Christmas ones out. So having visible access to things that you love that reminds you of being in the park is a way to preserve your memories. It also means that like Callie's ears, the ones that are not in the shadow box, you know, ones we don't buy from Disney that we buy like off of Amazon or whatever are in her dress up box and her Disney princess dress up clothes are visibly out on a rack across from her bed so that she can play dress up and kind of embody whichever princess she wants to at any given time. So we're preserving our memories by keeping it on the front loop that it's not something we have to go dig and get to. It's just there for us to play with, think about and talk about whenever we so choose. Let's talk about Disney art because Disney art ranges in price. Now we are, you know, I'm a teacher. We don't have like a dedicated space in our house that's just Disney. It kind of infiltrates every area of our home. But I love to buy Disney postcards when we are in the parks and then frame them at home. So I have two examples. This is also like a super cheap art hack if you've never done this before. Mark actually bought this for me um, in the parks. And then, sorry, again, trying to prevent you from seeing the shingles on my neighbor's house. And it's Mickey and Minnie and this little heart balloon. And I just love how simple and sweet this is. So he bought this for me and I kind of like tucked it away. And then when we were building Callie's bedroom um, in the original house where she was born, Carolyn, and now here, this has been a kind of a feature on one of her bookshelves. And then a favorite one that we bought the last time. So la about 14 months ago when we were in the park is this bell one. I love this style of art. 
I love this. So this is on Callie's shelf and just putting it in an Ikea frame, which is all this is, kind of gives it this illusion that it's like fancier art than it actually is. But this goes back to the point of like making Disney visible in your everyday life because Callie's room is Disney princess themed. Pretty easy there. But our nautical home doesn't necessarily speak to like having Mickey and Minnie plastered everywhere. So when we find art that fits with our decor, we snap it up because we want it to either be in our bedroom, be in the bathroom, be in the living room, like somewhere where we're going to look at it, think back to our trips and then talk about it because memories are only as good if you keep them alive. So this is one of the ways we do it is using like kind of Disney art as decor throughout the home in little quantities. So this may only really speak to parents Perhaps, perhaps, but millennial mamas, you are the audience, right? So books are a really important, well, they're really important to me, period. I'm an English teacher. I love to read. I want to infuse this type of imagination in for Callie as well. But if we have the chance to read Disney books and retell Disney stories, that will bring us back to talk about the attractions in the park. It will bring us back to who did we meet. So I kind of like two blended together. In one of our more recent videos, I showed you our Jungle Cruise book, but we also have a Pirates version of that. And we used to have a Small World one, and then Callie ripped so many of the pages because she was really little. But we try to infuse like Disney's storytelling into our reading time with Callie as much as possible. That's not to say she's not reading other types of books, but at night, she really goes for and is comforted by like the Disney storybooks like this and this one was given to her when she was like a baby it was part of my baby shower gift from um my best friend Allie so this one like we kept on her shelf for years without being able to read it to her but now that she's four it finally catches her attention and she will sit and look through all of these pictures in here um and she picks out the story herself so this is this is a a fun one. There's also like the five minute bedtime stories one that we like that has Minnie Mouse in it and like original classics like a Bambi, a Dumbo. We read a Dumbo one last night. So we're trying to infuse as much storytelling and talking about the stories of her favorite characters as we can. And that kind of leads us into reviewing, reviewing the good old autograph book. So and something I haven't done yet, we're just adding this to the list in quarantine. Um, this particular autograph book we bought in the parks. We actually bought this one um, in the contemporary. So we have all the autographs of the characters we met there. And I really wanted to be able to put photos of either the character or the character and Callie in here. So. That may mean I get to go back through my Disney photos again to print some out. Um, but you know, we have like her favorite princesses in here and she likes to go through and try to guess which princess did the signature. We do keep it high up on a shelf so that in the middle of the night she can't get up and just like tear the pages. But it is one of those things that she likes to sit down and then she likes to tell us, you know, when we're going through her stories or whatnot and we're talking, who does she want to continue to fill up her book? because we're going to be taking it to Disneyland with us in August. So I have a little work to do in here. Um, it comes with a little slip for a pen. I can't remember if it came with a pen or not. Probably. Do we still have that? No. Um, it did not survive a week-long trip in Disney World. Um, but we kind of revisit this as we review her stories. So this is a really fun thing to do. I never had a Disney or any autograph book really growing up. Um, but I feel like it's one of those keepsakes that she'll have forever. Like Mark still has his. So I think this is like a forever keepsake. Now, again, this is a purchase piece, but we always try to bring back something from the park that like can be incorporated into Callie's everyday play. Um, I happen to love this idea. Oh, I'm trying to open it without ruining my manicure though. So these little sets, First of all, they look like books, which is one of the reasons I love them because they go right on her bookshelf. They're super lightweight, they're portable. And then when you open them up, it's like this little play set. I don't wanna break anything. This little play set inside 
that comes with like a little sack of toy pieces. Um, and I, they were not expensive. We got this in the park, but I bet you could find it on Shop Disney. If you can, I'll actually link them below. Um, but playing with her toys, her Disney princess castle that Santa brought her um, this past Christmas, her, like she has like, you know, little plushies that we love to play with or pretend that where there are babies, like any toys that we can rotate in that have a Disney theme, we do. Now that doesn't mean that we own all exclusive Disney toy materials. That would be crazy expensive and impractical. But when she really loves a princess or a movie or a book, we kind of go, we invest all in. So with the princesses, we bought like the Disney animators mini collection because she loves that and so do we. Um, every time she wants a new toy, it's like a new Disney doll, like the, the Barbie-ish style. You know, they're not Barbies, but like they're that style. She got Merida in her Easter basket. Um, she's like really into that. And we like the little sets, the little plastic figurines, because we can like freeze them and immerse them in Play-Doh and do like learning activities through play with them. And I will say that during our quarantine preschool homeschool situation where we've been doing like a couple of letters a week and you know if you've been following us at all uh we have like themed days the princesses have come in very handy for helpful learning activities so disney toys anything that can be manipulated that has a disney component where you can sit down and talk about where you got it when you were where you got it like you know, her toys are kind of like little capsules of who she is in the moment. And we're trying to preserve that as much as we can. Another tip I have for preserving your memories is doing it through your senses. So I know that sounds kind of strange, but we're going to start with the magical menus feature. I will link all of the magical menus above in some capacity, but we have been loving the new releases of Disney menus. So if we can cook something that comes right out of the park, uh, like we did the Woody's lunchbox grilled cheese, we've done um, a loaded baked potato soup from Disneyland, we've done pancakes, uh, we've done eggs, we use Callie's Disney princess cookbook. I will also link that below. I get a ton of requests where that's from. You can find it on Amazon, uh, but I will link it below as well. So anytime that you can like eat something as if you were in the park, Mark has become quite a Dole Whip master here at home. We're not doing the, um, the recipe. The at home recipe has ice cream in it, even though it's lactose free in the parks, but it tastes amazing. And adults, he added rum to his. He loved it. He loved it. So trying to, you know, not that it's healthy every day, but trying to find little ways to like build in Disney food and the process of cooking it together and talking about it really does help preserve those memories. And then those can be recipes that you come back to when you feel like you need that Disney moment. Sometimes I get trapped in this spiral of you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty positive person, but I fall victim to being trapped into thinking like, when will this be over? Is our trip going to be canceled? When's the next time we're going to be able to get back? You know, like I go down that rabbit hole and then I have to shift my mindset and think, how can I bring Disney to me right now? What would be helpful for me? And I, you know, will go on Instagram and find my favorite Disney Instagrammers. Um, I will watch videos. I will kind of like sit down with Callie and say, what can we make? Things that like just little things that you can do to bring Disney back into your day and then to preserve those memories for the future. Another sense, hearing, right? So we have like a Disney playlist and we ask Alexa to play it. It's on every phone. It's, you know, it's through Apple Music. I also have a Spotify one. So we also will use like the Disney Park Bench YouTube feature any way to like listen to what Disney World would sound like that ambient noise is really helpful for me. Now, Callie would prefer to listen to like a soundtrack, right? Like we are into the Frozen 2 soundtrack. We are into um, a Disney princess mix up as she calls it. It's basically like 
a mixture of songs from different soundtracks um, and including like covers of songs. She really likes that. So we're listening to all different types of Disney music when it's just me like in the morning or when she's resting and I'm working, I will pop on like the sounds of Disney. So just trying to hear a little bit of it, even if it's only like a five minute component, just kind of centers me and brings me back. And the last sense that I have for you today, not the last sense, but like the last one I have to share with you is sniff olfactory nose, whatever, you know, I love a magic candle company moment. And still my favorite one ever is the contemporary because it just, oh, it's so accurate. Now these have been like burned down. There's nothing left, but I keep the canisters kind of to like essential oil my nose into believing that I'm in Disney. Like I'm in the lobby when I smell this. I can see the foliage and those scoopy chairs and the water feature. Like I'm in the lobby when I smell this. I love this. We also have tried out. We've tried out the Polynesian because the Polynesian is Mark's favorite resort. And this smells good, but it doesn't nail it like the contemporary does. Hmm. It does smell good though. We've been trying to find like an Olani candle. Haven't, haven't found the perfect one yet. And then we also, I bought for Valentine's Day for Mark, um, the Skyway candle because the Skyline, Skyliner, sorry, is our like favorite mode of transportation. And this smells very fresh, like laundry fresh. I think this is a great spring smell. We have a contemporary candle burning downstairs, not right now, but like we have one that we have been burning and we'll need a new scent coming up. And I know that we're not staying at the contemporary because we're going to Disneyland, but I don't know what the Disneyland hotel smells like. So do I start with the hotel or do I start with the candle? Chicken and egg situation, it's classic. Mm, I just, this, this might be like my favorite candle ever. Magic Candle Company, we should chat. Oh, I just love this so much. So being able to like smell Disney, we, we don't burn it all the time. It's like a special occasion, kind of like we're gonna sit down and have dinner. Uh, we're, we're gonna watch a show together. You know, it's kind of like a, a more intimate piece. And yeah, we burn it like when Callie's around too, but she can't appreciate it the same way yet. She just can't. Okay, so we've come to the last couple. Now, if you are a fairy tale family Facebook friend, thank you, first of all. Um, our page has grown very slowly but surely over the past what, couple of months, I guess. Um, and since quarantine started, Callie and I have been doing, uh, we made a group called Magically Made. Please join us there. Um, it is a small but powerful group of mamas who are looking to do some craft time with their kiddos. But since we started doing Magically Made, um, we've been trying to bring in some Disney crafts. So one of the one of the more recent crafts that we did for springtime are these like splatter paint butterflies. And then we added a little Minnie Mouse to the corner for the Flower and Garden Festival. So Disney crafts are really important to us at home. You know, we're, I'm not an expert crafter, but like we're crafty, we like to craft. I will make sure that those videos get linked above as well. Um, but any type of like Disney craft, we usually like to do them seasonally. We are now in the process of making rings for our countdown, which is a hundred plus days away, but it gives us like, again, at nighttime, when part of her nighttime ritual will be like to rip off a ring and count down how many days it is until we get to go to Disneyland. And I did program Alexa to know that so we can ask her how many days and she'll go through this whole thing. So it's become part of like our morning routine to talk to Alexa about it and then our evening routine to rip off a ring. So Disney crafting is really important to us here. Um, and if it's something that you are more interested in, I do have a freebie down below, but our upcoming launch for the subscription box, our, I don't want to like give, I can't give you too much information on it yet, but I just want you to know that the subscription box that we'll be launching, it's called Magic Mail and it will feature a Disney craft 
in a quarterly fashion. So there will be a craft like ready for you to put together and you don't have to do any of the work of going on Pinterest, finding supplies, figuring out what's age appropriate. It'll all be done for you. Um, and Callie has kind of been my test audience for that. And the last kind of bonus tip um, that we have, and this is where like the Mother's Day piece comes into it, is for me, jewelry. So I don't wear a ton of jewelry. I'm not like a heavy necklace wearer. Um, I don't wear a ton of bracelets. I have my Cape Cod bracelet, my wedding ring, my watch, and then earrings every day. I But, but if you can build in like a tiny piece of Disney jewelry, I have a Kate Spade Minnie Mouse ring that I'll wear when I need that extra like oomph. These earrings, oh wow, it scared me so up close. These little Disney earrings, I love. I wear them all the time. I have a pearl set. Hi, girlfriend. Yeah, I'm by the top. Mm -hmm. You see Callie's shirt? Speaking of like Disney love. Here, come here, I'll pick you up. She's got crazy hair. Princesses! Target. There you go, babe. Love you. Love Can you close this door without slamming it, please? Okay, I won't slam. Please don't. No, too hard. Thank you. So, like Disney little little pieces. Now, for the Mother's Day gift guide blog, gift guide blog, which I'll link below, even if it's past Mother's Day, Rebecca Hook. There are some really awesome pieces of jewelry, but then there's also like home organizers and planters and things that you can use to bring like that everyday Disney value back into your life. But I just, I wear these, you know, like I didn't put them on for the video. I had them on already. I wear them all the time because they're as simple as studs, but they just give me that little bit of like, oh, she's a Disney mom. She's not a regular mom, you know, you know? Okay, that is the whole list. That's the whole list. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope, I hope that your family is happy and healthy and you are looking at this time as like a privilege to be able to be with your family. Um, and maybe this video will spark you to have some Disney conversations about a past trip, an upcoming trip, a future trip, even if you've never been, to kind of talk about what it might be like to go as a family. Um, I find that leading up to a trip, you know, we talk about Disney all the time. We're always in planning mode. We're planning out outfits. You know, like if you saw on Instagram, we did our Disney, our Disney shop, Disney hall, um, where I'm purchasing things for this trip. So it's this big lead up. Um, and all the gifts that we get each other are related to the trip in some way. Like for our anniversary in June, we're buying each other fancy luggage. So like everything is built into the trip. But then when we come home, there's the lull, right? Like the Disney depression when you come home, that's very real. And then after that, it's kind of like, okay, well, I want to go back, but I have so long to wait until we get to go back again. What can we do in the meantime? And preserving your Disney memories, whether it's verbally um, as something that is a tradition for your family, if it's physically preserving them in scrapbooks and shadow boxes and picture frames, or if it's just like, this thing that you guys share together, you are building a Disney culture at home. And for us, that is super important. It's a really high value for us that Callie loves Disney and appreciates the magic of Disney in the same way that we do. So I hope this is helpful and that you've enjoyed this video. If you do, we would really love it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We are trying to grow our little Disney clan here. Um, if you're noticing something new, we have lighting now, getting real professional here, and a new camera is on the way. I'm very excited. So, and we're renovating the space. This may be one of the last times you see this background. So, Changes are happening to the fairy tale family. Okay, we love you. That is all. Keep that magic alive, friends. And until next time, bye.